Good morning everyone. Today we're going to be turning some pommel nuts. There you go. Over there. We're going to be making one of those. Alright, so the only downside of this is that I have to do this one handed because I've got to hold the camera in the other hand. So, what I've got here is my piece of bronze set up in the jaw. Okay. Um, assuming you have a lathe, you can do this, but it also it also works uh, to a certain extent with a wood lathe, but this is a proper metal turning lathe. Um, tips, when you inst insert your rod, um, insert it just a little bit longer than the piece that you're going to make. So, if you have a look there, that's what we're going to do. All right. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to flatten the surface from the uh, the last job that we did. So we're just going to move the chuck towards it and just out a little bit. Let me turn it on. Okay, I'm just going to turn it in a little bit. That's just cleaning the surface. And then one more. I think we can do a little bit more than that. Man, I keep it in the wrong way. This is what happens when you do it with one hand. There we go. Okay, now we're taking but now I'm taking off too much, but let's do it anyway so that you can see it. Okay, now the, now the flipping chuck has moved. So it happens when you do everything one-handed. This is not really the right way to do it. Okay, but all we really need is a flat spot in the middle so we can drill a hole. Okay. It's definitely not flat. There we go, that's better. Alright. Okay. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to put a, a drill bit in here. For the size of drill that for the size of hole that we need. In this case, I'm tapping a doing a five millimeter tap, which means I have to drill a four millimeter hole. Uh, how the hell do I do this? So, excuse me. Sorry. There we go. Let me move our drill bit up to almost touching. The piece your material. Okay, but not quite. Alright, let me turn it on. Now you see I've got a piece of tape around here. That's the depth marker. Make sure your everything's locked in place. Whoops. Everything's locked in place nicely. And away we go. Just turn slowly, see ya. Turning until we get to almost there. There we go. That touches the paper. Then we pull it out. Okay. Open the drill chuck and pull out our drill bit. Now, we're going to take the drill bit and we're going to use the um, five millimeter tapping bit. So, what I do is hang on, I'm going to press pause for a second. 
Okay, what I've done is I've put the tapping bit into the chuck, and all we do is we move it forwards to the touches, lock it up nice and tight. Now I'm going to find a place for the, the camera that hopefully you can see me doing this. All right, so get the, the tool out of the way, make sure the chuck is locked tight. Now we're not going to turn this on. All we're doing is we're using the, um, oh geez, I don't even know what it's called, the turny thing to push the chuck forward. And we're going to use this, we're going to push the two together, which is going to create pressure to help us tap. So pushing it in, pushing it in. You can see this the swath coming out there, so you know it's cutting. You've got to keep your pressure even. There you go. As soon as it starts biting, it's bitten enough inside the hole that I can now loosen the chuck, move it away, get the tool away. All right. Then we're going to take the... Um, the, the tapping uh, little handle here, and I'm going to put it on the end. Okay, so let me just make sure. Yeah, oh, here we go. All right, so let's put it on. Tightening it up. Just wiggle it back and forth to make sure it's tight. And then I hold it nice and firm, and then I turn the chuck. You hear it squeaking as it goes in. And you just keep going, keep your rhythm steady. Oops. Loosened again. This is an old handle. So I'm just going to do it like this. There we go. Nope, that didn't make a difference. What's happening is the little square end of the tapping tool is sliding in there. If you have any advice for me, you're welcome to post it in the in the comments column. I don't do a lot of work on the lathe. This is about the extent of it. I do also do pommels, turn pommels for daggers, as well as um, frog buttons for sheets. I turn them out also bronze. Okay, now it starts getting tight. When it won't go any further, don't force it, otherwise you'll break it. And just unscrew. Yeah, check inside. Excellent. Next step. We can now move the tool back into place. Alright, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark the depth, which I usually have measured at about 10 millimeters. And I move my tool. to the same place so that I know how far I need to turn down. The reason we do this is if you drill your hole too deep but you turn your um, uh, the, the, the inner diameter too small, too short, if you want to put grooves in your guard, in your, in your pommel, sorry, if you want to put grooves in the nut, if you do them too deep you might accidentally um, file a groove into the cavity which we don't want. So we always turn it exactly so that the, um, the end of the tapped hole is at the uh, is where the, the flat part of the pommel of the pommel nut sits against the gar uh, against the pommel itself. All right, so I've measured that. We can turn on and just mark it. There we go. Move it away. Okay, so that's marked now. Now all we do is just turn up to that nut, up to that mark, sorry. Wow, it's early in the morning, my, my English is not so good. All right, so now we give it hell. I know some guys might take more off, but I like taking small bits, 
small small slices but very quickly I find that it does the job very nicely now this is only part one this is the preparation stage because we need symmetry with the hole in the middle and everything nice and round when we get back to my workshop this is my father's workshop when we get back to my workshop we will put in the grooves we'll round it out we'll put the hole in it for the for a lanyard or a ring or whatever you want to put in now i generally draw my holes in my pommel about seven millimeters so we're approaching seven millimeters can i get the vernier We're going to check, just put it at 7 millimeters. There we go. It's a little bit big. Now I'll turn a little slower to keep those lines nice and neat. Also, we don't want to remove too much, we're almost where we need to be. I'm not a professional turner, so I may be doing many things wrong, but for what I'm doing, this is perfectly adequate. Okay, not yet. And keep going steady. Now the finish of the um, the, the, the the inner part of the um, the, the the pommel nut is not crucial because it's going to be inside the handle you're not going to see it there we go it's a little bit small but that's fine i like a bit of wiggle room now all i'm going to do is i'm going to clean up the outside so that it looks pretty at least yeah there we go and then i always do about the same as high i go about as high as it is deep There, now, depending on the size of nut that you want, you can see here, I've got one approximately the same size, you can see there, which is approximately the same size as that one, and then I've got a smaller one. And the smaller one I use for Pucos, the bigger ones are used for Bowies and whatnot. But uh, right now I only need one for a Puko, which I've turned already, so I'm going to use this one for a Bowie, so we'll leave it nice and big. Now, what I'm about to do is, is quite dangerous. Then again, in working with any high-speed tool is dangerous. We're going to cut it off. Unfortunately, I don't have a cut-off tool. So we're very carefully going to take a hacksaw. This is not generally acceptable practice. Don't do this at home, kids. Use the correct tools. Alright, so I'll leave a little bit in the middle and then I'll saw it off. There we go. There we go. Now the rest we'll do back at my workshop where we'll make it look pretty. So this is just the meat and bones of, um, of turning a pommel nut. All right, okay, wait for part two. Thanks a lot for watching. All right, welcome to the part two of the pommel nuts presentation. So what I've got here is one of the little nuts that I turned and uh, I've got a little center mark that I've punched there and we're gonna drill a hole through. So we clamp it in. I use the uh, inner part of the pommel nut to judge whether it's level or not. So if it's not level, when you drill your hole through, it could go in through either way, skew like this. So when you turn your um, groove in, it's not going to be even. Um, for this one, I'm not going to put too big a hole because it's quite small. So 
just enough for like a piece of paracord or something. So I've got here three and a half millimeters. Okay, now this is round, even though I put the center punch in, it wants to go to one side, so I'm just going to rotate it very slightly. See, it wasn't perfectly straight, so there's a little bit on the one side. But once we've rounded it off, it will uh, it will even out and look much nicer. All right. So next step. All right. Next step, we're gonna put the nut on here. Basically, it's a piece of threaded rod in a drill, in a hand drill, clamped in a vise. This is our makeshift lathe. I've got here a uh, just a round um, uh, rotary tool I'm going to use to rough in the groove. Now you could set the drill to run permanently and then grind it in, but the problem is the two work against each other and end up making an off-center groove. It doesn't look very nice. So what I do is I take it and I draw. I know you can't see it from that side, but I'm going to do my best. I take it and I just put grind in the groove. Slowly, the covers, using the tuck of the drill to keep everything level and straight. I'm doing it step by step. Okay, now that I've completed the loop, I'm now going to stop turning it. Adjusting it each time, make sure there's no high spot. Now you can see pretty even. Now, once you've done your preliminary groove, you set the drill and you just use a file. The reason we don't use the rotary tool is because the, the, the turning of this way and the turning of this way creates a kind of a vibration. And again, like I said, it puts that little thing off center, which doesn't look very lacquer and is difficult to fix. But if you use a plain old file, it goes down nice and easily.
So yeah, that looks really nice. Then I've got here a piece of old belt. Take any of the soft J-Flex belts that you might have. You can tear off a thin strip from it. Don't throw them away, always keep them, they're always useful. The reason we like using the J-Flex is because they've got soft backings. And now we polish on the inside there. It really doesn't take much. Now, if your groove happens to be a little smaller or narrower this way, you can take your J-Flex piece of sandpaper or belt and you roll it up. Ah, come on. And you roll it up like this. Now, this technique works also if you're doing grooves in handles or grooves in guards. And instead of taking a piece of sandpaper and wrapping it around a stick or, a, or an old file, Take a piece of your old sandpaper and roll it up into that. It's a little round piece. So let me just set the drill again. There we go. Now the inside is polished. Now we can take this part to the grinder and make it round. All right, so I've got a relatively old 60 grit belt on here. Now we're gonna work the... See there? Just make sure the camera is getting it. There, there we go. That's not bad. When it runs, you can see it's nice and symmetrical. Ah, oh, come on. There we go. All right, so I'm just going to put finer belts on and polish it. Now, because of the because of the speed of the, the drill, we can actually go immediately to a very fine belt. Come on, focus camera. Oh well, I'll show you when it's done. Next step. Okay, last step. Let's take it. And bump it. There you go. Right, so there you have it. These are the three stages of making a pommel nut. There you go. That's the one I just polished up now. Not too shabby. And that will go into there. We have prepared 
uh, hole. When you push all this together, the little screw will come out the back. And we'll just take this and screw it all together. So that should fit. Yeah, this is going to be round, by the way, if anybody's asked. I'm going to grind off these corners. There you go. Nice and neat. That's how it fits into your handle. Cool. All right, I hope you enjoyed how to make a pommel nut. And uh, please click subscribe. Thank you.